Hey everyone, hope you're all doing okay and welcome to the ultimate Citra 3DS guide. In this video, you will find everything that you need to know about the emulator, how to set it up, what do all the options mean, how to decrypt your games, etc. I made a guide like this about a year and a half ago and a lot of things have changed since then. This is a detailed video and I'll put timestamps in the description, but I do recommend watching the entire video if you want to understand the emulator in depth. So without further ado, let's get started. Announced in March 2010, 3DS didn't have the most impressive hardware inside, it had ARM architecture more specific specifically ARM 11, which was a 45 nanometer and clocked at 268 megahertz. A lot of custom-made components were made into SoC, such as Pika 200 GPU developed by a Chinese startup and 128 megabytes of RAM. The main value proposition was it, it could show you 3D stereoscopic effects without the glasses, which in some cases were absolutely amazing, but in others, they were lackluster to say the least. Citra was developed three years after 3DS came out. The emulator has been steadily improving ever since. Now we can even play it on Android devices. Fun fact, the developers behind this emulator will go on to develop Yuzu, the Switch emulator. In terms of change, a majority of the improvements are under the hood. The UI and the builds still look surprisingly the same. The most noticeable change after performance, however, is the online play. So many things I've implemented regarding this and it is truly amazing. Massive kudos to the developers. Okay, so to download Citra, it's pretty easy. We just need to go to citramu.org and download their latest binary for Windows. Just a quick mention that it is also available for Linux and Mac. The downloaded file is an executable and we just need to install it. After the installation visit, it's going to download the required repositories. Now, there are two versions of this emulator, Canary and Nightly Build. In theory, Canary version can be a little faster and more optimized given it's the experimental release, but the emulator has gone through about 8 years of improvements, so we're not gonna worry about that release. But it's there if you want to tinker with it. After it is installed, make sure to have all these things checked. It should then launch without any problem. At the bottom right corner we have a button, this will allow us to find an online room for us to join. It's also available from the drop down menu in the UI. First up we have load file which can be a 3DS file, it's also called a decrypted file because the game contents are unlocked and are encapsulated within a file. In contrast we can install a CIA file, kind of like an executable on PC or PKG file on PlayStation 3. It all depends on how do you dump your ROM from your 3DS. Recent is pretty self-explanatory, Amiibo is the agent that can be used to create avatars in some games. In emulation, except for configuration and cheats, they're all pretty simple. We'll go to configure and cheats in just a little bit. Again, view is pretty straightforward except for debugging, but you're not gonna be using debugging options. In multiplayer, we have different options to browse a public lobby, create a room, or join an existing room. In tools, we have a couple of options starting with movie. You can record the gameplay footage and then choose what to do with it. Frame advance is a very niche option. It's specifically for people looking to create tool assisted gameplays. You can enable frame advancing and then advance the gameplay frame by frame to create that perfect playthrough. In help we have all about that emulator and all that jazz. Let's start with the configurations and in settings we have general settings. The first two parts are pretty self-explanatory, just some traits of the emulator that you might want to enable or disable. For some of your ROMs it might help to select a specific region and you can do that here. Then we have two options regarding the emulation speed. At first glance it can look pretty confusing. Why do we have two emulation speed sliders? But it's actually very basic. The first slide is the speed of the emulation. That means how fast do we want to emulate a specific ROM. The second one is the speed of the ROM itself. If we choose alternate speed, it will enable this slider speed. Tywald from Citra explains it pretty well. It's the same as when you have a master volume slider in Windows and a secondary volume slider in YouTube. In about 95% of the cases, you will leave them at 100%. Increasing them can take a toll on your performance. It's going to be useful in a handful of ROMs that are slow-paced or maybe turn-based games 
I guess where the increased overall fast forward will be useful. After that, we have Citra Web Services. Instead of us making an account with email and password, we can have web tokens that are unique to each Citra installation. It will allow access to telemetry and other useful statistics. In debug, we have GDB stub. It is the process of connecting a debugger to Citra and debug the ROM that Citra is emulating a debugging option so please keep it disabled in this section we can filter our log to be more efficient if we don't want repetitive messages about a class or we want more detailed messages we can use this field show low console windows only it will show us a command prompt showing every execution step that the emulator takes enable cpu jit which is just in time compilation please leave it as it is i'm pretty confident that they can move this setting to the general section because of how optimized the emulator is but i appreciate the devs putting it here ui section is pretty straightforward let's move on to the system settings and in october 2014 nintendo released a new iteration of 3ds called it new Nintendo 3DS. So yeah, anytime you feel useless, remember the effort that the biggest gaming company put into their new iteration of console. Oh, what do we call this new Nintendo 3DS? Yes. Jokes aside, enabling this will make the new 3DS games work. This is pretty self-explanatory. Playcoins are an in-game currency for Nintendo 3DS, which one can use to buy items, game, mods, or characters in certain games. Console ID is the unique identifier for our machine. Next up we have CPU clock speed. There are a handful of games that suffer from CPU starvation problems. So underclocking or overclocking them can help. So this is a totally experimental option and it will only be useful in a very handful of cases because most of the games are pretty playable. We can underclock the emulated 3DS CPU by sliding the slider to the left and overclock it by sliding it to the right. Moving on to camera, we have different camera options here. Again, we're not going to bother with that, but you can if you have specific hardware. And in storage, we have different paths to our repositories and it's, it says use virtual SD. That's exactly what we're going to use. So these are all the emulated file storage system for the 3DS. Let's move on to the graphic settings. And in the first tab, we have enhancements and in renderer, we have the internal resolution. Right now, this is selected to a very minuscule size. This each spot is 720p or full HD. Enable linear filtering. This is a very robust image enhancement technique. Please keep it enabled unless on a low end PC. Post processing shutter, we're gonna leave it to default. Texture filtering is exactly as it sounds. Got a mid to high end PC. You can select Bicubic or XBRZ. Both very promising options with a lot of iterations to get better textures. Stereoscopic 3D mode. If you've got a stereoscopic display, meaning a 3D TV, you can enable it here. Layout is pretty self-explanatory and then we have the utility options. In utility, we have some texture options. For some games, modders have made custom textures which you can download and place it in your custom texture folder. Some of these textures are upscale version of the original or completely different in other cases. Dump textures will copy your textures in your directory. In advanced tab, regardless of the PC you have, you will always keep all of these enabled. I haven't come across that use case, but only in a couple of games where you get artifacts or lower FPS, you can experiment with these options. Low end PCs can disable vSync. vSync removes screen tearing effects at the cost of some computational performance. So if you got a low end PC, you can disable that to get some more FPS. In audio setting, we have the emulation engine, which is high level emulation. HLE. If you get audio stuttering for some reason, it might be helpful to go with LLE accurate. Enable audio stretching. This is a technique where it tries to minimize the audio stutter. And in controls, we have a default profile that's already been made for us. And we can also make a new profile or delete any existing profile. Here are all the button mappings that you can do and the modifier scale is the joystick range that you want to use for your games. For example, if you set the modifier to 50%, the joystick will be at max 50% of this range so you'll walk instead of running in many games. And then we have shoulder button and miscellaneous button. So that covers all the settings. Now let's add some games. Alright, now that we have added our games, two of them are decrypted, but one of them is encrypted actually. So let's see what happens when we try to run it. 
It says your ROM is encrypted, please follow the guys to redump your game cartridges or install titles. There are two possible reasons as to why your game is encrypted. First up, if you've dumped it from your 3DS, your dumping method may be incorrect or maybe the file got corrupted while you're dumping it. The second and the most obvious and the most common one, if you download it online, then it's gonna be encrypted. As Citra doesn't allow piracy, that's why it refuses to run encrypted ROMs, even though it's gonna be way easier for them to implement it. Luckily, the community members have already implemented a tool where you can decrypt the 3DS file and we're just gonna download it from here. After downloading the tool, we're gonna separate our encrypted file. So I'm gonna move it into a new folder. Extract the batch CIA 3DS decryptor into your encrypted games folder. And then all we have to do is just launch this batch file. So we're just gonna wait till it's all decrypted and we should be ready to go. Wow, look at that, it says it's already finished. That was quick. Now let's try to run it. And voila. Alright guys, now we're gonna talk about how to implement cheats in your games for 3DS and it's very simple. All we have to do is go to this GitHub link and one of the community members have painstakingly compiled all the 3DS games. So we're gonna try to find our game which is Pokemon. Let's go in here and this is the text file that contains all the cheats. So this is the cheat that's called Max Money and we're gonna copy the hex code here and we're gonna go into Emulation, Cheats and then add cheat so max money and we're gonna paste the code in here and then we have to save it so if you want to toggle this we just have to click this checkbox and it should be toggled that's all you have to do in terms of cheats Even with this guide, you might run into problems. Just drop down a comment below and I will try my best to help out. Anyways, this is Rogue Head. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys later.